Hello, my name is Jalala Wen, and this is day six of 33 of my video series called Deepen. And I hope as you're taking these videos in, that that's exactly what you are experiencing. A deepening of self-intimacy, of understanding and feeling the different parts and aspects of yourself, and also just a, a deepening awareness of this consciousness that I'm offering. It's a, a different way to look at awakening and ascension, and it can really resonate with some people, um, and, and others it may not. So you'll know as you go if it's something that resonates with you. So today I'm going to focus on 3D, 4D, and 5D consciousness and how they express in these different versions of ourself. In day four, I covered 3D, 4D, and 5D consciousness and the seven areas of life. So you can look at that video and get a sense for what I mean by 3D, 4D, and 5D, because there's different definitions of it out there. When we start looking at these consciousness states and how they express as versions of ourselves, it gives us a way to really locate where we're at related to them. So it goes from being this concept, oh, 3D, okay, I think I get that as a concept, to being very personal. So you can apply it personally, which is what I find is so useful to actually transforming or even transmuting into a different frequency. So looking at the 3D self, you can often connect with your birth name, feel the waveform of that energy of your birth name, and often it's connected to, to your birth family. That is really where the 3D self was seated and anchored and initiated, was in 3D reality. So even if your birth family feels like soul family, um, there's still the agreement uh, as a soul coming in here was that you were going to try out this 3D dualistic, more polarized reality in order to grow. So the 3D self is really anchored in that. It's conditioned in 3D reality. So it takes a lot for it to move out of that conditioning. It can literally feel like a kind of suicide to the 3D self to do that, especially when it's still, I feel, the prevailing consciousness of our collective is third dimensional. So... Making up that 3D self is really a whole bunch of fragmented parts and sub-personalities. And I don't see that as a psychosis or a disorder. That's just the, the reality of responding to 3D density. We need to, we had to, fragment off into different versions of ourselves. We, that was the modeling that we got from our parents. That's what they did. That's what their parents did. That's what their parents did. So it's entire legacy of 3D conditioning to create different versions of yourself. Some of these versions, one I've already introduced you to in day two, which is the inner protector. We also recognize the inner child, the inner teenager, an inner mother and an inner father energy and the inner punisher. So these are kind of broad terms for what can be more subtle energies as you begin to work with them and connect with them. But they provide a doorway in. Usually if I say to someone, I feel your inner punisher, they can immediately connect to what that energy is. It's a, usually a very judgmental energy, usually of self but it can be of others as well. I'm going to be talking about these different parts along in the series. In fact, I think each of them get their own day and their own meditation. But looking at these different fragmented selves, if you can also feel how they are part of a bigger 3D self, 
And that again, that 3D self often goes by your birth name. It's, a, it's more of a persona, what I would call a persona. You can feel it perhaps if you still have a job or a career that's more 3D based and less soul purpose work. You probably feel uh, your 3D self engaging in that job. You might feel it around birth family, the recent holiday season. You are aware of a version of yourself. So I'm just giving you another way to relate with it. As the soul starts awakening and those energies come in, then you become aware of a fourth dimensional self, which is really that soul coming in to the 3D self. So it, it's this um, push-pull kind of, of reality. It's often torn. It can lead to dark nights of the soul. But you are also getting access to some of those higher frequencies of, of fifth dimensional and higher, of oneness and bliss and kundalini. And often that, those frequencies are coming in and that fourth dimensional self is blooming, but the 3D self is still anchored to conditioning. So you can see how this kind of torn thing would be set up where it would be difficult to feel a consistency of self, which is what I've seen and felt in many of those who um, come to me for sessions. So we're working with the 4D self, as you, as you start thinking about that and connecting to that, is really what you would feel as your, probably your spiritual self. And maybe you already have a soul name that you go by or that you were given by somebody else. And that's probably your fourth dimensional self that's transitioning. And maybe you even chose a soul name so that you could move away and out of your 3D waveform. So the fourth dimensional self also includes what I call a gatekeeper that's starting to awaken. I'm going to do a whole video on the gatekeeper, but basically the gatekeeper is the veil keeper. It has access, it knows about all of your timelines and all of your lifetimes that your metasoul has expressed out into. So the gatekeeper starts coming forward as the fourth dimensional self. It can actually be a very strong energy of that 4D self. And the gatekeeper is often um, in its unconnected to state, in its disconnected state, um, it can be very heavy and depressed and even suicidal. This is a different kind of feeling than a 3D self that's depressed. A 4D self that's depressed or suicidal, it has a real heaviness to it. It has an epic feeling to it. It has a sense that, that this is coming from the soul, yet you don't know how to reach it or how to connect with it. So beginning to feel your gatekeeper, understanding what they've been trying to do, which is keep the veil in place that you chose, your veil of amnesia. Um, as you begin to connect to that gatekeeper, it can start moving into being more of a guide. It can start lifting the veil with you, and you can go into collaboration together. And then, of course, there's the 5D self, which isn't really a self much at all. As you move more into fifth dimensional consciousness in your body, you find that really what the fifth dimensional self, its purpose and focus is to serve love. So the ego gratification of the 3D self has really been transcended. The wounding and the trauma of all of those parts that I named has been healed or is healing. The struggle of that 4D self, that dark night and, and the ruminations and the machinations of the soul is really starting to heal and transmute. And the 5D self almost feels like an angelic version of you. And your focus and your purpose is really about serving love. And that's to yourself and with yourself. You're not excluded as a self. It's just more and more about giving and being and sharing with others. You have a pretty clear sense as a 5D self of what your purpose is here and why you're here. And fifth dimensional and higher uh, consciousness frequencies are available to you in a fluid way. It's pretty fluid and regular and you connect very 
very much with your different metasoul aspects, both galactic and others from other timelines, and you're more and more merging your consciousness to theirs. So that 5D self is also beyond, we could say, your human being. So you're really feeling your galactic consciousness, your galactic DNA, your connected to your Merkaba, your light vehicle, you're traveling multidimensionally very often. Um, so your engagement with what we could call 3D reality is very different than a 3D self's engagement, which is like this, like that's all the 3D self can see is 3D. As you become more and more your 5D self, you're, you're maybe in life, but you have this multidimensional relationship to it. And with that comes more and more sense of joy, of magic, of purpose, of trust, and of surrender. So what I want to do today for the meditation is have you connect to each of these selves, your 3D, 4D, and 5D, and just see what, see what comes forward. As, as I've said before, whatever you see today um, is supportive of you. It's what you're meant to see. So if you don't see much at all, maybe you feel a lot more, or you're not feeling very much, but you're hearing a lot, or however that manifests for you, it's still really useful to connect you to this. So, we will close our eyes. As you're digesting all of that I just said, start to turn your focus to your inner world. I always connect you to your breath because I just find it so helpful. It's something we're so often not conscious of, but to connect to that inhale and exhale, um, that's why I find yoga, hatha yoga so helpful because you're really connecting your breath to every moment, so you're making it conscious. So in meditation, that's very helpful too to be aware of your breath. Inhale. And the exhale. So we will feel ourselves in a white light space. It's going to support this exploration and where it is that you need to go. And the first energy we're going to connect with is your 3D self. So what I'm seeing as a portal to that part of you is your family home. So if you could feel and see where you grew up and walk through that front door I'm going to ask your 3D self to come forward or you may walk right into a scene. Maybe it's a family dinner. Maybe it's a traumatic scene. You might see as your 3D self, your inner protector. Whatever you see there, 
is good. I'm just gonna, sorry, I'm just gonna move this candle because it's too warm for my plant. And my plant was talking to me, <laughs> telling me to move the candle. Okay. So as you connect with your 3D self, just invite them to communicate with you if there's anything they want to tell you, if there's anything they want you to feel about their reality. They might be quite overwhelmed and even sad, lonely. They may be anxious. Just open your heart to that 3D self version of you that you might be trying quite hard to bypass or transcend. Yet is an important aspect of your being. going to move out of the family home now into that white light space again and now as we connect to your 4D self we're going to go to your castle as I've offered in other meditations, which represents your essence. And I do feel it as a higher dimensional frequency, actually. A place to go beyond the physical. So as you walk down the path through the woods toward your castle, you can feel how your fourth dimensional self actually lives in this realm of what we could call the imagination, multi-dimensional reality. So we're going to ask your 4D self to come forward. Maybe they're inside of the castle, maybe they're sitting lotus style on the lawn or doing yoga or meditating Maybe you see and feel your gatekeeper. You may also see um, spirit animals or guides as your 4D self. So a dragon, a unicorn, There's no limits here. So allow your 4D self to communicate with you messages, images, anything it needs to offer. Your 4D self may have a heaviness to them and, and even a suicidal feeling of like not belonging in 3D but not knowing how to move into the higher frequencies. Feeling trapped or lost is very common. So just extend your heart space to this 4D self.
And what I'm seeing right now to access the fifth dimensional self is I'm actually seeing a staircase off to the right that is surrounded by white light and is, is white itself and seems to go to infinity. <laughs> so we'll say goodbye to the fourth dimensional self in a moment. Move toward that staircase and with the support of the divine we will start to walk up that staircase up those stairs. This is a wonderful way to raise your frequency is to visualize stairs and begin to move up them. You can even count them if that helps. As each of your, every time your foot lands on the next stair, As you move up, you should feel a lightness in your being. Rising of your frequency. Lighter. When it feels as if you can't go any farther, move to your left and there is a platform there. We'll move on to that platform. And there's white, it almost looks like fog around us. Ahead of us is a set of gates. Um, I usually see them as golden and gilded, sort of like the gates to heaven. Start to move through those gates. This is moving into golden earth, new earth fifth dimensional consciousness. As you move through the gate, you may feel quite light and even blissful, or you may feel a rumbling of feeling and emotion um, as you calibrate to this higher frequency. If you feel that rumbling, then see if you can connect to your 3D and 4D selves. Maybe you need to go spend more time with them where they are, and that's fine. This again is a location for you. It's data, it's information for you about where you are right now in this moment. Meeting you at these gates on the other side is your 5D self. This is your service of love self. You may not be able to see them. They may just be a very bright white light. They may take the form of a guide or even an angel that you like to connect with. It's wonderful if you can make it more personal than that so that you can really feel your 5D self. Just take in their energy. They're meant to be a boost.
giving you a feeling sense of who you are when you embody your highest timeline purpose here. also a bridge to your star family, your metasoul aspects, divine mother, divine father. But they're a pure, porous bridge rather than a karmically anchored one. So we're going to stay at this vibrational level as we start to open our eyes. Come into the present again. Well, we're in the present, but physical. (laughs) So that was very uplifting for me. And I hope it was for you. Um, I could feel actually the more becoming of my 5D self, which is the energy that I want to be coming from in these videos. So that was a beautiful thing to connect with. (laughs) There was a period of time where my 5D self was really, um, her name was Bridget, and I really needed to see her as a separate um, version of me. And just being around Bridget, I would just, parts of me would just cry and cry and and I would shake even because her frequency was so loving and it actually hurt to let her in, which is basically letting myself in. Um, So often you'll find that as you're, as you're rising in love frequency, your, your heart can hurt as parts of you um, open up. And especially that 3D self and that 4D self. So you may have found the 3D self was a lot easier to get a sense of. The 4D got a little murky. And the 5D was like not able to be accessed today. And that's all fine. Like I said, it's all information for you. I want to mention that this is the kind of bridging that we do in sessions, in one-on-one sessions, is to these selves, these versions of you, supporting your fifth dimensional self to just keep coming into your body. It's that energy in your body that holds space for the healing of the 3D self and the trauma they hold and the anchoring they have to 3D and also the karmic trauma that the 4D self, the gatekeeper, I, the star seed child as well is part of that fourth dimensional self. There can be a lot of layers of karmic wounding there. And it's that 5D self coming into the body that holds the space for this process. So we support you to grow and expand and deepen that connection. So I hope you had a deepening experience today of these different (laughs) selves. Raphael's nodding. (laughs) Um, And I will see you tomorrow for day seven.